There we go, there we go. Now let me ask you this. Who has gone down and seen some of the smart TV demos that we have running? To at least see some of it. I know you've seen some. All right, so good. So what we wanted to do is, when you think of smart TV, and you ask yourself, what is smart TV? It's pretty simple, right? It is the best of the internet, and what we love about TV brought together. That's really it, really. I mean, you think about we had our mobile phones, we all loved our mobile phones, and then all of a sudden we got the internet on them, and all of a sudden, bang, they became smartphones. The idea behind smart TV is very similar to that. You take something we all love, which is TV, especially being here at CES, we all love TV, and then you bring the power of the internet, and you combine those two together in a really meaningful way. And it was yesterday when we were talking, after we got off stage, some guy came up to me and said, well, who's going to bring me smart TV? Right? That's the question. Who's going to, where do I go to get smart TV? Who's going to bring me smart TV? And my sort of silly joke was, well, who's going to bring you smart TV? Well, Intel, of course. And, but really, the idea is that smart TV isn't so much of a single product, it's an idea, right? It's a product concept. And what we're saying is that there's different ways of bringing it together. So, you know, you've got the um, Google TV here on the, on the box over here. We've got Don, and Don's going to try to keep up with us as we go along and make sort of crazy examples. He's going to try to keep up with things like squirrels riding skateboards. Oh, we can do that. So we've got that, and we also got BoxyBox. So that's an example. You've got, you've got the Google Box, you've got the BoxyBox, and then you've also got, if you go take a look down there, you've got from Free, you've got the Kino, and then you've also got the uh, KugelVision from Telecom Italia. Now what's interesting about these two things is you've got the BoxyBox, which is really good at social networking. You've got the Google TV box, which is really good at search. Well, those you can go out and buy. You can go out and buy them right now. And now you've got this other one where you've got Free and, and Telecom Italia. Well, those are service providers, right? So you've got two very different types of models of how to bring together the TV and the internet, but really it's ultimately about content and the TV that you love. Exactly, and it's not just a box, because let's face it, how many people want another set-top box? Raise your hand high. Uh, it's also, if you look at this this TV right here, this Sony, it's actually built into the TV. If you talk about Boxy, Boxy had big news at this show. Boxy is putting their software, no box required, Boxy, no box, don't know why, in a ViewSonic TV. And if you think about uh, Windows, Windows Media Center, hooked up to a TV like this, it is also smart TV. It's a matter of being able to combine, as you said, the broadcast and the cable with stuff streaming over the internet, doing it in a way where you can add intelligent processing, which computers do things. Exactly, that's why it has Intel in it. And really the goal is to give you access to any kind of content that you would want. So things that might be out on the web, things that might be out on TV, and it kind of brings them together because we all know there's going to be more and more content out there, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, speaking of more and more content, how many, does anybody have a copy of this book? Uh, anyway, it's a great book to take a look yeah. at it. Two things in the book, though. And first, really interesting about all this content, you say in the book, which I am just overwhelmed by, that by 2015, we will have 500 billion hours of video at our disposal, at our fingertips. Does anybody know if you can watch all that in a year? I don't think so. But you say another thing, and now, another thing in the book that I want to take a little bit of a, 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 a concern on. You disagree with Yeah, I disagree here. You were riding out to CES last year with a professor who's been studying uh, television, the internet coming together, and he said, look, first of all, we're all very good at knowing what's amateur versus professional, and I buy that. I mean, you guys know the difference between a cat riding a skateboard and Lost or 24, right? I mean, it's pretty clear. But his assertion was that professionally produced content was big budget, required people from Hollywood, and, and big food budgets, and it, you know, that is absolutely not the case. We are producing shows that, yeah, they look great, they're in HDTV, they sound great, but they're not big budget shows. And, you know, I bet some of you guys are too. Anybody have a YouTube channel here? Who's got their own YouTube channel? When I know someone does. All right, well, there's so many people making videos on YouTube. Some of them are cats riding donkeys, but some of them look great, sound great, or episodic, and they are, to me, indistinguishable from professional produced content. And it's, so it's really that kind of middle ground. We're always going to have the kind of fun and things that we all take with the camera and put up, and then we're always going to have the mainstream shows that we love, but there is this sort of growing amount of content out there. You know a lot about that. I mean, exactly. we were talking before, we should talk a little bit about Dig Nation for a second, but One of our when, shows. We, when we were talking before, we were kind of talking about that mid-range, and there's a lot of stuff out there that people are creating, and also backlogs of TV and movies that we love as well. And we were talking about Dig Nation, which I'm a fan of, and I was talking to Jim, and I'm like, oh yeah, and, and Dig Nation's interesting because it's on the TV and it's on the internet. And Jim was like, no, 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 it's only on the internet. 
We're not and, on cable. Yeah, and so, although we have audiences that are as big as cable. Right. The, the other interesting thing about Dig Nation is that all media is about community. The Dig Nation community, not only do they want to watch the show, they want to get together. We do a live taping of the show at South by Southwest. We get 3,000 people there who want to watch and share, but they want to be with each other, other Dig Nation fans. And that's an important thing, Smart TV really helps you accelerate that. I call it, uh, you know, it's really community on steroids when you get into that. Well, and that's also how you find something to watch in this huge amount of, of content. I mean, that's how we all find something to watch when we're doing it now. It's what our friends tell us. And that's another example of using this kind of smart TV platform as being very social, as a way of getting recommendations from other people, as a way of going out there and searching things. Because ultimately, as I said at the end, it's about TV, right? We're not trying to turn the TV into a PC. It really is about TV and the TV that we all love. Exactly. exactly. Gentlemen, final thoughts. So my final thought is, one of the great things about technology and smart TV and hooking the internet up to television means that the gatekeepers are gone. If you want to be a TV star, or if you want to do your own TV show, or if you want to do something episodic and build an audience, this enables you to do that. The technology is there to create it, make it look professional, and build great shows just like what we do. So what I want to leave you with is hopefully we've given you just a, a beginning idea of Smart TV. I know we kind of went through this stuff. So I would encourage you though to go down through the, the booth and have a look at all the different versions. Have a look at Free and Kubovision and, uh, and Google and Boxy. Have a look at all of them because I think if you take a look at them, you'll start to get an idea of, sort of what Smart TV is. And I, I do have to call someone out here in the, in the audience. When I, I'm a TV guy from way back and I used to develop interactive TV applications. There was a gentleman right here by the name of John, and John and I developed these a long time ago, and he was very skeptical when he first saw a smart TV, but he came here today, and I just asked him beforehand, and he went down and looked at the orange box, and what he said was, oh, I saw the smart TV, and yeah, it's 